In the early 20th century, physics was on the brink of a revolution. Scientists grappled with phenomena that defied classical physics. The dual nature of light was a perplexing discovery. In 1927, Davison and Germer changed our understanding of matter. They provided evidence for the wave nature of electrons. Their experiment confirmed wave-particle duality and paved the way for electron microscopes. Before we delve into the intricacies of the davison germer experiment, let's rewind a few years to 1924, when a young French physicist named Louis de Broglie put forth a radical hypothesis. De Broglie, pondering the dual nature of light, made a bold suggestion. If light, a wave, could also behave like a particle, then perhaps particles like electrons could also exhibit wave-like properties. De Broglie proposed that every particle of matter, from electrons to planets, has a wave associated with it. He even provided an equation to calculate the wavelength of these matter waves, now known as the de Broglie wavelength L equals h over p. In this equation, L represents the wavelength, h is Planck's constant, a fundamental constant in quantum mechanics, and p is the momentum of the particle. This simple yet profound equation links the wave-like property of wavelength to the particle-like property of momentum. De Broglie's hypothesis was revolutionary. It challenged the traditional view of matter as being composed of discrete particles and suggested a deeper, more fundamental reality where particles could also behave like waves. His idea, though elegant, was met with skepticism from the scientific community. Experimental verification was needed to solidify its place in the annals of physics. This is where Davison and Germer enter the story. Davison and Germer, working at Bell Labs in New York, were not initially setting out to prove de Broglie's hypothesis. They were studying the scattering of electrons from a nickel target. Their setup was deceptively simple, an electron gun, which could fire a beam of electrons at a specific target, a nickel crystal acting as the target, and a detector, which could measure the intensity of the scattered electrons at various angles. The entire apparatus was housed within a vacuum chamber to prevent the electrons from colliding with air molecules and skewing the results. The electron gun, consisting of a heated filament that emitted electrons, was aimed at the nickel crystal. The experiment relied on the principle of electron diffraction, a phenomenon that occurs when waves interact with obstacles of comparable size to their wavelength. By analyzing the scattering pattern of the electrons after they interacted with the nickel crystal, Davison and Germer hoped to gain insights into the arrangement of atoms within the crystal. Little did they know, they were about to stumble upon something far more profound. The choice of nickel for the target was crucial to the success of the experiment. Nickel crystals have a highly ordered periodic structure, forming what is known as a crystal lattice. This lattice, with its regularly spaced atoms, would act as a diffraction grating for the electron waves, similar to how a diffraction grating separates light into its constituent colors. When waves pass through a diffraction grating, they interfere with each other. This interference can be either constructive, resulting in bright spots, or destructive, leading to dark spots. The pattern of bright and dark spots, known as a diffraction pattern, is unique to the wavelength of the waves and the spacing of the grating. Davison and Germer knew that if electrons were indeed behaving like waves, their interaction with the nickel crystal lattice would produce a diffraction pattern. However, they were initially unaware of de Broglie's hypothesis and were focused on using the scattering data to understand the surface structure of the nickel. Section 5. Observing the unexpected, electrons behaving like waves. As the experiment commenced, Davison and Germer fired a beam of electrons at the nickel target. They meticulously measured the intensity of the scattered electrons at various angles, expecting to see a smooth variation in intensity. To their surprise, they observed something astonishing. The intensity of the scattered electrons did not vary smoothly with the angle. Instead, they found distinct peaks and troughs in the intensity, forming a pattern 
reminiscent of wave diffraction. This unexpected result suggested that the electrons were not simply bouncing off the nickel atoms like tiny balls, but were instead interfering with each other like waves. The regularly spaced atoms in the nickel crystal were acting as a diffraction grating, scattering the electron waves and producing the observed interference pattern. The experiment had to be repeated to rule out any experimental errors or misinterpretations. However, the results were consistent. Electrons, when fired at a crystal, produced a diffraction pattern, a telltale sign of wave-like behavior. Section 6. Calculating the Wavelength. Confirmation of de Broglie's hypothesis. To further solidify their findings, Davison and Germer needed to confirm whether the observed diffraction pattern matched the predictions of de Broglie's hypothesis. They calculated the wavelength of the electrons using the de Broglie wavelength equation, taking into account the energy of the electrons and the spacing of the atoms in the nickel crystal. Remarkably, the calculated wavelength of the electrons matched the wavelength predicted by de Broglie's equation, confirming the wave nature of electrons and providing experimental validation for de Broglie's bold hypothesis. The electrons were indeed behaving like waves, with a wavelength determined by their momentum. The world of physics was forever changed. The davison germer experiment, through its elegant simplicity and profound implications, had ushered in a new era of quantum mechanics, where the distinction between waves and particles became blurred, and the subatomic world revealed its astonishing and counterintuitive nature. Section 7. The davison germer Experiment, a pivotal moment in science. The davison germer experiment stands as a testament to the power of scientific inquiry, where a seemingly simple experiment can lead to profound shifts in our understanding of the universe. Their findings not only confirmed de Broglie's hypothesis of matter waves, but also had far-reaching consequences for the development of quantum mechanics. The experiment demonstrated that the wave-particle duality, once thought to be exclusive to light, was a fundamental principle of nature, applicable to both matter and radiation. This realization shattered the deterministic worldview of classical physics, where particles had definite positions and momenta, and ushered in the era of quantum mechanics, where particles could exist in a superposition of states, exhibiting both wave-like and particle-like behavior, depending on the experimental setup. The experiment also highlighted the limitations of classical physics in describing the behavior of matter at the atomic and subatomic levels. In the quantum realm, particles could exhibit wave-like properties, such as diffraction and interference, phenomena that could not be explained by classical mechanics. Section 8. The Impact of Wave-Particle Duality Shaping Modern Physics the discovery of the wave nature of electrons had a profound impact on our understanding of the atom. It led to the development of the modern quantum mechanical model of the atom, where electrons are no longer depicted as tiny particles orbiting the nucleus in fixed paths, but are instead represented by wave functions that describe the probability of finding an electron in a particular region of space around the nucleus. The concept of wave-particle duality revolutionized not only atomic physics, but also other branches of science, including chemistry, material science, and cosmology. It laid the foundation for understanding the behavior of matter at the most fundamental level, from the interactions of subatomic particles to the formation of stars and galaxies. The experiment also paved the way for the development of electron diffraction techniques, which are now widely used to study the structure of materials at the atomic level. Electron microscopes, for example, exploit the wave nature of electrons to achieve resolutions far greater than traditional light microscopes, allowing scientists to visualize viruses, proteins, and even individual atoms. Section 9. Beyond the Experiment. Applications and Implications. The legacy of the davison germer experiment extends far beyond the confines of a physics laboratory. Its findings have had a profound impact on our technological advancements. 
electron microscopes have revolutionized fields such as biology, materials science, and nanotechnology. The development of semiconductors also owes a debt to the understanding of the wave nature of electrons. It underscores the importance of scientific curiosity and the power of experimentation in unraveling the mysteries of the cosmos.